So Lori, we are here in Olds, Alberta for the AgSmart event, also the FCDC Field Day, which takes place tomorrow. This is a big year, it's the 50th anniversary of the FCDC. It's also the first year that the Field Day has taken place as part of AgSmart. So this is, this is a pretty big deal for you. I was hoping you, we could start off things by talking a little bit about you as an FCDC quality scientist. Can you share with us your journey, how you became focused on cereal quality for the plant breeding pipelines at, at Olds College and the FCDC? Um, sure, it's um, kind of been a unique journey, honestly. Um, I started at FCDC as a summer student. I was supposed to be working at the university and they lost their funding and so I ended up at the Field Crop Development Center as a summer student. And I guess I kind of fell in love with the research part of it. Um, you know, it's always moving, it was very dynamic. And they told me that if I focused a little bit more on plant genetics, that they could hire me full time. And at the time I was doing animal nutrition. So um, I started when I finished university and they basically handed me a box and said, this is the latest technology of near infrared and, you know, learn everything you can know about this. And that kind of progressed into um, being technician and going back and getting my master's degree and then ending up research scientist, so yeah. So over the last 30 years, you've developed, and this, this is a mouthful, you've developed near-infrared spectroscopy, NIRS, to expand the quality program to include feed, forage, food, and malting characteristics. Yeah. How has this technology really impacted the assessment and improvement of cereal quality in the breeding process? Uh, Near-infrared is this, I find it very fascinating. It's a way of taking light and detecting different components in a cereal grain. Um, the unique part is, is that it's non-destructive, not like wet chemistry. You can analyze it as whole grain or a ground forage. And so over the last 30 years, I've developed equations that can predict um, things like protein, starch, and animal feeding components from raw grain. So we are able to scan thousands of samples through this technology every year, and we can get the quality in a matter of seconds. So that's huge for our breeding program. If, if we were looking for animal feeding quality um, and we were doing live animal feeding trials, for, for example, we would have to send it in large enough quantities to feed to an animal or you know, do a wet chemistry procedure. It might take months for us to get that res those results back. This is like seconds. So we can do all of our breeding program between harvest and when we put it in the ground again, and we can do all those analysis for our breeders to make selections on. So it's really moved everything forward quite quickly because we can do it at a very early generation where we don't have enough seed to, to waste. So we can scan it and go right back in the ground and we can do it right at the beginning of assessment. So speaking of seed, you're showcasing some crops here, some varieties this year. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're showing to the public? Well, we have a number of varieties here, um, both our feed and forage program and our malt program, triticalia as well, is on display here. Um, the feed and forage has some new lines that we're really quite proud of. They have um, better standability. You know, the straw strength is really, really good as well. Um, but we've also assessed them for forage and feed quality. So in forage, we're looking for, you know, the, the type of fiber that's there and the digestibility of that fiber. How can it be util utilized by animals? Um, in our grain, we're looking at how can we process it better, um, uh, how the cattle can digest that as well. And then in our malting quality, quality is so important in malt. Um, the industry has very strict parameters, so we have some varieties here that are non-GN, which is non-glycosidic nitrile. Um, it's a precursor to a carcinogenic compound in the brewing and distilling, um, and that's kind of become very important for the Canadian market. But we also have some lines here that would be suitable for the craft market with a little bit lower enzyme. We have some that have higher enzyme for more commercial brewing. So we have a wide variety of samples here today on Showcase. So it's been three years now, I believe, since the FCDC became part of Olds College. Can you talk a little bit about how that partnership has really helped you in, in your work bringing these, these new varieties to, to the industry? 
you know, before this, we were part of the government system, um, and it wasn't a bad thing, um, but it had a number of limitations. Um, Olds College has really, um, I mean, opened the doors to our breeding programs. We have a lot of opportunities to work with all of the research that's going on at Olds College and the different specialists that they have here. So specifically for my program, um, you know, I'm doing quality assessment. They're doing agronomic studies here. Um, but I'm very excited because for the malting program, let's say, um, for the first time ever, we've been able to purchase new, new equipment to do micro malting on site. So before we had collaborators in the industry that would do our samples and we were kind of limited on the number of samples we could do and how long it would take to get those back. So we have a micro malter coming that allow us to do all our wet chemistry in-house, but we've also been able to partner with the teaching brewery and the whole teaching program here. So the micro malt units going in the teaching brewery, we're gonna have students involved. Uh, we're gonna expand the teaching of the brewery science and we can include the malting as part of that as well. But the same thing is happening on the feed and forage side too. They have the technology access center here, um, livestock production, and they have experts in animal nutrition and digestibility, and they have opportunities to have feedlot trials. So we can do everything from an initial cross to developing a new variety to do animal testing or even brewery and sensory. So, you know, really expanding what we're doing. Yeah, when you think about expanding the future and say, you know, five, ten years down the road, where do you see that partnership and this technology going as as a quality, so some, someone who researches cereal quality, where do you see, where do you see yourself in ten years, what might things look like in terms of the technology you might be able to introduce? I know that's a huge question, but any, any thoughts on where this all might go? Oh, you know... <sighs> It's hard to say, honestly. I'm so excited about developing this lab and that will be my immediate focus. Um, but we're talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning. Um, there's lots of opportunities in that. Um, how can we take what we've brought in the lab with the near infrared and how can we put this on a combine? How can we do that assessment in the field so we never have to take it into the lab? We have combines available now that you can do protein and moisture and everything and they can do that analysis before it even goes into the bag. So what if we could put all of our NIR and what if we could tell how a cow is going to digest it or what kind of malt it would make before it even got out of the field? Maybe we can do selections quicker. We're also looking at drone technology, um, things like biomass and forages and if we can do biomass why can't we do more quality characteristics how can we tell if it's fiber digestible what the digestibility is before it even goes so I'm really interested to see how this new um, the remote technologies can really uh, expand what we do and maybe do it even earlier and more efficient yeah, it's definitely exciting when you think about what might be coming down the pipe, what the future holds. So it's interesting to, to see all this this year here at AgSmart again for the first time. And before I let you go, what's the biggest benefit of, of your field day taking place as part of, of the AgSmart event for you? Uh, well, for us, I mean, we've always had a very successful event in Lacombe. Um, but, you know, after a while, um, you're reaching maybe to figure out what can we do new and better and being involved with AgSmart and all the technology that is here and all the other research groups at Olds College um, is, is pretty exciting. You know people can go over there and they can see a drone and the autonomous unit and then they can come over here and see the new varieties that are going to be using that equipment. So the producers that come through here I mean, Olds College has such a strong producer base and researcher base and, and funding people that uh, really support research. So we're looking forward to having um, those connections as well and having more producers see the work we do and how we can make a difference in their business. And I think this is the spot we can do that at. Yeah, and these crops, these new varieties is where everything begins in terms of, of technology. Like they say, it all starts with the seed. Right? It all starts with the seed. And so I hope we get a, a huge turnout for a field day and they can really see the seed that's going to be influencing their their production yeah thanks for your time Lori. thanks so much